All right, tonight it's everything Hoosiers. Grab a drink and join us on tonight's tailgate. Thanks for joining us on tonight's tailgate. Tonight we have Ryan from the All For You podcast. You can find him at B-Town Bucket Boy. Uh, so, Ryan, thanks for joining us. Hey, I'm happy to be here. Thanks for having me on. Yeah, yeah. of course. So, Ryan is going to be uh, talking about some Indiana Hoosier football, right? Absolutely. That's what we hope he's going to be talking yeah. about. Yeah, that's, that's, <laughs> what we, that's what we thought we were going to talk about. So. <laughs> so, I mean, I guess first of all, like, Hoosiers. You say you grew up in what Chicago, right? Is that what you yeah. said? So, as you just were born into Indiana football, is that right? So, I have my own little like boutique history of like my family's relationship with Indiana football that I, I won't get into. Well, I, my my great grandpa Brunoslav uh, came to Paul came from Poland, and he's got his own crazy backstory of like you know, uh, black market dealings and, and had a cousin that ran a speakeasy in the United States and walked wow, that's one. super cool. And he decided to settle in Indiana right around. Um, oh, I forget where it is, but he somewhere in Northwest Indiana. And he decided to settle there because it reminded him the most of Poland. Poland is very oh, flat. Wow. Right? Okay. And he became, he popped into that area right as Indiana was in one of its better football histories. The only year we went to the Rose Bowl, okay. he had gone local and became a huge Hoosier fan. And so wow. okay. you know, great grandpa Brunoslav, or as everyone knew him, Barney was like, <laughs> nice. Oh, they, uh, could you believe they call us Hoosiers? <laughs> <laughs> it means like hillbilly. <laughs> and, but, but other than that, I was not raised in a college football household. I was, okay. I was not like Chicago is not really a rich college football town. I was going to say, you got to say football, like it's, yeah, the, it's Bears. the Bears. <laughs> yeah, Bears yeah. Like, no, and, and being a Bears fan is miserable. But so, <laughs> I mean, yeah, I'm a Bears fan legally. But anyway, so the, <laughs> if you are a college football fan, if you're raised to be one, you're either a fan of like where your parents went to school, mm. right? And because, you know, kids from college, kids from Chicago do go to college everywhere. So yeah. you're either like the fan of your parents' college or you're a fan of Notre Dame. And I was never There's really, no luck. And <laughs> I was never really any, no, Chicago is a Notre Dame city, yeah. unfortunately. And so I go to Indiana and I didn't really care about college football, didn't really care about like college sports in general. And then you go there and, you know, when you go to a college, it transforms you. It's the most important years of your, oh, some yeah, of sure. the most important years of your life. And uh, it was actually Tom Allen coming in that really, like I was there during the end of the Kevin Wilson era and it didn't really yeah. like do it for me. It was mm -hmm. exciting. It was fun. Um, I had a good time, but I like Tom Allen coming in turned me into a football obsessive, like not just an IU football obsessive, but like a, a college football in general obsessive. So I always Fair have awesome. like a, a really soft spot in my heart for Tom Allen yeah. because he's the person that brought me into college football. That's Fair awesome. Enough. I mean, I totally understand that. Like, I know. I knew you like Tom Allen. And thank well, you for like not they going, lost. Tennessee. Thank you for not going to, to Notre Dame. I appreciate that. <laughs> <laughs> no, yeah, it's just like, but you get you get a coach or a player in there that just yeah. it just like even if you've been a fan. You become an actual fan yeah. when you see, like, you just see their heart for the team and everything like that, and you get to see them play, and you're just like, you know what? I want to be that excited. I want to be that awesome. Like, I just, I just want to be in that enveloped in the atmosphere on a Saturday. Then you can't escape it after that. That's, you just, you you just can't. <laughs> That's how AJ Hawk was for me. Fair enough. I was an Ohio State fan, <laughs> and AJ Hawk was the guy that I was like, I love watching him play. I want this that hair. I do. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Got to bring that up. <laughs> I hate AJ Hawk so much. I, I hate him. I, I hate him when he was at Ohio State. Like, well, I didn't really know him when he was at Ohio State, but I hate him on the Packers. And then becoming an IU football fan and finding out he was on from Ohio State, yep. I was just like, oh. But wait, wait. You guys want to see my AJ Hawk impersonation? Oh no. Go for <laughs> it. <laughs> yep. Uh, that's Luke, pretty accurate. Luke, do you approve? <laughs> <laughs> that's pretty accurate. <laughs> You just need Pat McAfee uh, yell, <laughs> yelling in the background. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah, I can't do a McAfee. I can do a lot of impressions. Yeah, I just no, can't do I a McAfee. <laughs> uh, so, 
Um, you can't do it. You can't do a Pittsburgh accent. <laughs> no, I really can't. I have to start working on my Pittsburgh accent because Signetti is a Pittsburgh guy. Mm-hmm. There you go. Yeah. 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 Speaking of coaches, uh, yeah. How excited, I guess, uh, is Bloomington like about Signetti? Bloomington is surprisingly ecstatic about the hire. Okay. Okay. Uh, I think that what happened, like what made these last three years really painful for IU fans is that, you know, kind of like what I said, Tom Allen made IU obsessives out of a lot of us. Mm -hmm. And Mm -hmm. right at the moment where it looked like that this program was going to be turning a corner and like getting sustained success, 2021 happened. And our best team, our most talented team, we probably will have for a generation there were 35 severe injuries as recorded oh, by the big gosh. 10 network. So it's like, and we were down to like clipboard warrior quarterbacks mm. at one point during that game against Ohio state, yep. we, were, we started a, uh, a walk on or not mm-hmm. started, but went to, mm. and we were just never able to recover. We had to turn the team over twice in the portal in the two years after that. And it just like, it, it got a lot of people's hopes up and caring about IU football and then just, twisted the mm-hmm. night yeah. and it yeah. made these last three years really really painful and so and people like me were worried about moving on from tom allen because i don't think any fan base trusts their ad or their you know their university <laughs> to like maybe ohio right. state does but i uh, <laughs> like in some cases <laughs> universities trust their like yeah. background support to, to make the right moves yeah and i really don't trust scott dolson and i was very worried about what would happen if we moved on from Tom Allen, because Tom Allen was the best of what Indiana uh, was going to shell out for, right? I, I can yeah. go into a bunch about that, but I was very happy to be wrong. When we landed Coach Signetti, you know, Indiana Twitter, I'm very active on Indiana Twitter, follow me at B-Town Bucket Boy, uh, but I'm very active on Twitter and immediately every single IU IU fan account like discovered the Bing AI image generator <laughs> and just put in like Signetti Bison football stadium, <laughs> but a uh, carpet bombs or like <laughs> missile strike. Give me a give me a, a, a an X wing made out of cigarettes, you know, oh and, and just posting all of these images of anything cigarette flavored cigarette meat. Yeah. My, my handle is still technically sigs in the crib. I haven't changed it yet. <laughs> like the, there is like an eruption of we got a guy like a, a yeah. genuine bona fide dude. Oh yeah. Yeah. I mean, he has a tradition of winning everywhere he's gone. Mm-hmm. doesn't matter like other schools he's been to before even James Madison. He was at mm-hmm. uh, Elon university where literally they had a record of like four and 20 and within one, the same season, the very next season, he actually had them at eight and four. Yeah. So, like, mm-hmm. Indiana does have a coach that could turn things around, even if it's not his roster immediately. Well, I mean, let's be fair. He yeah. made s- huge splashes with James Madison. He yeah. had me posting stuff like, let him play. You know, like, oh, we're yeah. sitting here. He like, made them the Dukes. Yeah, he made <laughs> like, them the Dukes. These like, guys would not shut up about JMU this yeah. past season. Yeah. Like, she will. Loved them. You got to love what they're doing, man. So I, I, love, love, I love the hire. Yeah. I, I love the hire when they made it. Um, you know, you feel bad, a little bad for James Madison because, yeah, you know, sure. he, they're, they're he took yeah. – how many coaches did he take? I know at least the, the defensive coordinator and the offensive quarter, coordinator came from James Madison. He took defensive a lot of – Defensive coordinator, yeah. offensive coordinator, stud quarterback coach, <laughs> stud <laughs> defensive line coach, strength and conditioning coach, special <laughs> teams and tight ends coach, and, like, the guys that he left behind. The only one I think that James Madison fans were excited to see left behind – were was the offensive line coach okay and yeah. i was happy to see him left behind because we retained the only mm-hmm. person from the old staff we retained is bob bostad yeah uh, who is like he's awesome genuinely top five offensive line coaches yeah. alive at any level of football mm-hmm. yeah so you know like that is such a huge win and so, yeah, so essentially I'm, you pulled a hardball and just brought everybody with you yeah yeah. Well, hey, yeah. I mean, work. they even pulled a little bit of a Coach Prime, getting the players too to come with yeah, them. Yeah, getting the players. <laughs> like we, yeah. I saw a lot of players just from the transfer portal. Like eight, I think. I mm-hmm. think it ended up being eight, and uh, every single one of them, well, virtually every single one of them, either was or sniffed uh, the All Sun Belt Conference team, mm-hmm. and mm-hmm. that's kind of been our approach in the transfer portal. If you look at it, it's a lot of G five guys. I was thinking about it earlier. I think there are only three transfers in from power five schools and it's the uh, redshirt senior tackle from wisconsin trey wedig 
and then uh, a wide receiver and a running back from Wake Forest. I lied okay. there's a fourth, and then a wide receiver who's like a special teams specialist from Texas Tech. Everyone yeah. else is like, we got all the James Madison guys who are all conference, all Sun Belt guys. We brought in two other kind of all Sun Belt type of players from Old Dominion, two safeties. Okay. And mm -hmm. then we also had um, two, we, we brought in 2022 all Mac player of the year oh. and would have won it again this past year, but a couple of injuries held him off from it. Uh, Curtis Rourke, the quarterback, okay. yeah. and then yeah. one of his favorite wide receivers from Ohio. Oh, wow. Ohio, nice. Okay. Ohio. Well, that's, I mean, that's killer because, you know, you said you brought in that return specialist, which I'm really happy about because one of my favorite guys in all of college football, he left. Jalen mm. Lucas, right? <laughs> I, and it's not just because he has my name. He was, <laughs> I loved watching him play. And like, I found myself watching Indiana games just because I wanted to see him play. He just wants to hear his name. He, That's and his. he's not lying. <laughs> yeah. He's just like, yeah, my name, he's Lucas, I did that. that. I remember you talking <laughs> about this about back him. during the season. During yeah. the season. Yeah. So, but uh, I mean, that was a big loss. Was there anybody else that was like a big loss for you? Um, and then kind of like a, a two part question. You talked about a lot of the transfers. Was there anybody else a big loss besides Jalen Lucas? And then who's the guy that you are watching this year and kind of like have that, this is going to be the guy, whether it be an exciting guy, a guy that, you know, hasn't had a chance and he's going to, you know, come to his own. Uh, so two part there. That's such, that's, that's, that's more than a two part. That's like okay. three <laughs> open ended questions. So let me, let me just first say my piece on Jalen Lucas. Sure. Love it. Yeah. Love watching him play one of the most explosive players okay. I've ever seen. Um, I feel really bad about how poorly utilized he was. Mm -hmm. And I don't put make, I don't say that that's his fault, but he was tremendously poorly utilized. We discovered him in the middle of last season that he was as explosive as he was. Yeah. And everyone's like, Oh, he needs to get more touches, more touches, more touches. And so Walt Bell coming into this past season decided, okay, let's, create like a triple option offense mm. and have Jalen Lucas like spamming speed options. Cause that worked one time against Michigan state and Purdue. Let's just, let's just keep spamming speed options and, or like read options where Jalen Lucas is just punching it up the gut. And yeah. we'll, we'll mm -hmm. just hope that that works. Right. <laughs> and you know, you put a ton of wear and tear on the kid and he mm. was never really able to produce at the level that he's capable of. Mm. And then we also stuck him on punt returns and kind of yep. struggled there. He's a much better kick returner. Yep. Um, but no, he's, he went to Florida state. They're going <laughs> to use him. Great. I'm very excited for him. Other guys who departed that sting, um, one just recently departed and it really stings. Cause I, I was kind of expecting him to be a cornerstone piece, maybe not a starter. Maybe he was getting edged out. I think that might be what happened. And, and he was getting passed up from by a younger guy fa sooner than expected. And I think that might be why he bounced. Uh, Philip Liddy. Mm, yeah. We brought him in from uh, Texas Tech. And he held it down in the middle of the line. He was our uh, defensive tackle in there. I think I think they might have been. He was. He's too small to play like nose tackle. So um, with the new defense defensive scheme that's coming in, uh, they, it sounds like he was just kind of getting edged out by Marcus Burris, who's uh, I, this is all conjecture. Like sure, fair enough. He leaves mm -hmm. over here. It's it's uh, you know March, but I, I think he got edged out. Who who knows what happened? But he's he's leaving. He originally was a guy that was a big deal that he was staying. Um, some other people that left are two safeties from last year: Lewis mm -hmm. Moore and Phil Dunham. Lewis Moore was kind of a genuine snub from like the Big Ten All Conference team, like at least like a third, yeah. third team. He should have been on there. They both struggled in like the last like two or three games, um, but they were really, really good. Mm -hmm. he, we yeah. lost Lewis Moore to Ole Miss, and then we lost mm -hmm. Phil Dunham to I think he went to FAU. Um, it we originally thought that we were going to be really weak at safety going into last year, and then those two just. I don't want to say came out of nowhere because they were on the team the year before, but they didn't start and you know, they didn't get much play time. So they came in and they just balled out and they were like a, a cornerstone of our defense for the majority of the year. So losing them staying tough. I, I think that we've done a good job of replacing them. I think the new scheme is fine without them. And I think that, um, there's some, there's some like, you know, message board stuff that I won't entertain on here, but I think that, I think that with the new staff, you always have like the liberty to, to cut bait with some people that yeah. a previous staff like might have to accommodate. 
um, and might cause like issues because you can't just like get rid of your talented guys if you've been there for a minute. Right. But if you're the new guy coming in, you can be like, ah, oh, no, thank you. Yeah, right? exactly. Like all I'll say with that is that like Phil Dunham was in the portal and he posted, I'm coming back. And then six <laughs> hours later, he posts, never mind, I guess I'm not. <laughs> I think that uh, might be a little, a yeah. uh, little more than conjecture there. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. And uh, and then the, some other guys that sting that leave. Um, offensive linemen. We were originally going to have a really veteran group that have been playing with each other for like three or four years total, all coming back. We get two of them coming back, which is a big mm. deal because it's the most talented one. Carter Smith comes back okay, out good. of the portal, and then we talk Mike Tadic our, our uh, super senior guard out of going to the draft. And he's, I don't know if he was going to get drafted, but now he's going to be coming back and sliding to center, which we desperately yeah. need. So we lose our center from last year, Zach Carpenter, and then uh, a guard and a tackle, Matt Bedford and um, Khalil Benson. The Khalil Benson and Matt Bedford yeah. story, little little side story. It's really funny because they were both originally going to be going to Colorado. And it was this whole huge thing. Matt Bedford got this big NIL deal that he was like calling himself the tax man. And they were like making t-shirts. Oh, wow. whole thing. And then he flips to the ducks. <laughs> so, you know, they're like they're doing funny things over there, but yeah, yeah. losing all of them, losing all of them sucked. I, I wish we were able to like run it back with them, but I'm very happy with like what we've replaced in the portal. Somebody awesome. that I'm excited about. Yeah. Let's I talk about some good news. Up. What's up? I said, let's talk about some good news. Exactly. Uh, there's a million people I'm excited about on this team, and it's really hard because so many spots are so deep. This is genuinely the best wide receiver room I remember Indiana ever having. Um, mm-hmm. And I've also like gone back and, and tried to like learn about IU history. I really do struggle to find a room that's as talented as this. You've got Donovan McCauley coming back. You've got uh, Omar Cooper, who was a great recruit, really shined. You've got Elijah Surratt coming in from James Madison. I he love that guy. Yeah. yeah. Go crazy. Uh, and then you've got a whole bevy of guys behind him that have been doing well uh, that are going to like continue to continue to ball out. You've got guys who have a lot of production from other places coming in. So mm-hmm. I'm really excited with what that wide receiver room is going to do. But I have to say that my favorite is my guy that I was like pounding the pounding my uh, desk saying, please get this guy more minutes. Yeah. And it's uh, it's it's Howard. It's it's okay. or, sorry, sorry, scratch that. I stuttered Trent Howland. It's Trent Howland, uh, our big bruising running back. Yeah, who was started last year as like our fourth string technically behind Jalen Lucas. Um, we didn't really use Jalen Lucas as a running back, but we did. It's complicated. Uh, it was, was it was really no, weird. Yeah. Yeah, he was getting no snaps. And then he started to get a tiny amount. And I'm like, please, like, there, there came a point where our run game was so bad, where I, like, and Trent Howland was not getting any snaps. And I said, mm-hmm. like, like, because because uh, one of our running backs was injured, and we just decided to use Jalen Lucas as a workhorse, which, mm-hmm. you know, he's not Maserati to tow trucks. Like, yeah. it doesn't make mm-hmm. sense. And uh, I said, like, we have guys on the team who have been there for a minute, like Trent Howland and David Holloman are both juniors. Like if they can't step into this situation that they're made for, why are they on the team? Right. And, you know, I don't know if you know this, but our offensive coordinator got fired mid season. Uh, I forgot about he, that. Once he gets fired, then all of a sudden Trent Howland gets, finds his way into the lineup and just starts balling out. And by the end of the season, he had played his way up to basically running back two slash running back one, depending on availability. Oh, wow. And so he's the only one that's coming back this year. Yeah, uh, from the guys that were getting starting reps, and he's the one I wanted back the most. And when you look at the profile of all the guys that have come in, the two guys from James Madison, the guy from Wake mm-hmm. Forest, uh, and the other guys that we have, uh, we also have one from North Carolina. They're all like oh, five ten wow. and like uh, two bucks, like two hundred pounds ish. Trent Howland is the one that's like two fifty, two forty five. <laughs> like he's a, like six two. If you guys remember Stevie <laughs> Scott. He's like a he's like a stronger Stevie Scott. Okay, I was thinking Bettis. He probably is not that big. <laughs> no, no, no. Not, he's built. He's, yeah. he's not. A, he's not fat. He's he's, yeah, he's not. He's not the bus. He's. Yeah. Yep. Fair exactly. Enough. So I think that when you, I don't know what that running back room is going to look like, but I know that he's the only one that brings what he brings in that yeah. room. So I think that he's going to factor in a lot. Awesome. Good to know. Awesome. Well, so we're running. We're we're starting to run a little out of time, but. 
Uh, we got we got two other questions for you. Um, okay. And first one is, what big news is coming out that you're hearing out of Bloomington right now? Like we got spring practice going on, all these other scrimmages and stuff like that. They're about to happen. And then second, what are your predictions for this upcoming season? Okay, I'll, I'll spend way more time on the second one. Uh, <laughs> Signetti, Signetti has done a great job of keeping things fairly tight-lipped, except for what he wants to in Fair terms enough. of what the team's looking like. Um, he says that there's a quarterback competition between okay. Curtis Rourke, Taven Jackson, who's still there, and the new uh, freshman, Tyler Cherry, who's a huge recruit that he pulled in the second he got there. Um I don't buy that. I think yeah. Curtis Rourke's the main guy, so I don't I don't put much buzz on that. I'm very excited to see what the I really want to see like at the end of spring who's looking like they're at what spot on the depth chart because there's sure, a sure. lot of battles that really confuse me. Uh we also have like a few we have a lot of spots that we need to flip and then also turn into other locations. We have mm -hmm. too many tight ends, unfortunately. Some of them yeah. are probably gonna enter the portal and we need defensive line depth pieces and then we also need uh, some safety pieces okay so there's a, there's some portaling we need to do in the spring and i don't know i think everybody's heard that like the spring portal is going to be a lot more wild than we've been accustomed to mm -hmm. this last sure year. yeah so oh, yeah. uh you know fingers crossed i'm holding on to my desk and hoping everyone <laughs> on my depth chart stays there unless coach doesn't want them there but you know we'll see yeah as for predictions you know this is like how optimistic am I going to allow okay. myself to be? This is your stage, man. You yeah, do what you is... want. So let me just say this. I've never seen an Indiana football schedule with this much green grass in it. Awesome. Mm -hmm. So okay. let me, let me like really quickly walk you through the schedule. hundred percent. Florida, uh, Florida international first week, you know, you know, better get that. Done. <laughs> uh, <laughs> what Western Illinois FCS program. Okay. Yeah. Then we take a road trip out to UCLA now I am afraid of this game, so don't worry. I'm not gonna like shit talk the Bruins. <laughs> I think that I like I like Ruben Foster. I think that mm -hmm. he's a yeah. Forster. Is it Forster or Foster? Uh, I think it's Fo uh, Foster. Now I'm questioning. Yeah. I think it's Foster. Yeah, it's yeah. Deshaun Foster. Yeah. Yeah. I I oh sorry sorry Deshaun Foster. Yeah. Uh, I I really like him. I think he's a great culture hire. I think the thing that stood out when they hired him was him saying it was either him or someone else saying we got somebody who wants to be here. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And that was there was a pop in that room of players was, when when that yes. got said, and that's that's huge for something like that. Um, you know what position they're going to be in with how chip kelly left them sure. with how yeah. they're like this coaching change came late in the cycle how uh you know the the defensive coordinator got poached by usc like yeah. i don't think i think they're going to be vulnerable and also uh i'm more afraid of the trip out to pasadena than i am going to be about the crowd in pasadena so you're not I'm worried about bellamy the, the head the office coordinator they, they hired <laughs> Well, like, I, I mean, I, uh, yeah, that's a huge yeah, move for them. Like, it that, is. that's and that's a whole like that's an NFL yeah. mansion that I won't go yep. down. Um, but uh, yeah, no, I, I I think that they're putting together a good team. I think they could have a good year. I think that they're sneakily one of the more difficult games on this schedule. Mm -hmm. um, but I, if if we can win that game, then the next game is uh, Charlotte. Charlotte. We play Charlotte, and then after that, we play Maryland without Talia Tagovailoa. Mm. Uh, and then, so what, what is that going to look like? We don't True. know. We play them at yeah. home. Yep. Then we go to the homeless Northwestern Wildcats <laughs> who are trying to catch lightning in the bottle two years in a row. We're yep. going to be playing them at a former MLS stadium. Oh. We're going to be playing them at Seat Geek Stadium oh, wow. uh, okay. in like Southwest Chicago. Yeah. I, I mean, will definitely be going to that one. That's yeah. Fair. yeah. So I, I, I'm not high on the Wildcats this this next year. Oh, I that's fair. Too much of a yeah. Yeah. Of that. I get that bye week then come out of the bye week playing nebraska nebraska mm -hmm. sneakily probably going to be one of the better teams sure. in the big 10 next year uh they see year. that i think that they're like i look i watched them mm -hmm. last year and i said matt rule already has them at the point to where they're like a quarterback away from mm -hmm. making mm -hmm. yeah yep and they just got i think we saw that a couple times the quarterback the yep I, well, I I think Harburg is still going to get the job next sure. year because I'm yeah. not I'm not a fan of starting a true freshman straight no, no, out of no. high school. Yeah, Raiola has got a little while ago before yeah. he's ready to go. But I, I think that I think they'll make noise, so they won't mm -hmm. they won't be pushovers. It's going to be our homecoming game, um, right. and then the week after that we play Washington, who they come to us again another mm -hmm. home game, and mm -hmm. Washington, you know, it was a tire fire. 
And the only thing that saved them is the hiring of Jed Fish, who put out the tire fire. Right. But it smell it still smells like burnt rubber. It does. Exactly. Right? Yeah. And so I don't think that they're going to be in a position. I think we'll be in a position to really pounce on them in this game as long as so. it's the team that yeah. I think we are. Right. Yep. Then the week after that, we go to uh, Michigan State, if mm -hmm. I remember correctly. Mm -hmm. And so, you know, Michigan State and Indiana are kind of like sure. cosmically linked twins. Yes, they right? are. And because, you know, they brought in uh, the guy from Oregon State, mind blank, Jonathan Smith. Yeah. And, uh, and so they're doing their rebuild. It's kind of the same, but kind of different. He only brought three players over from yep. Oregon State. So we'll see what they look like there. Uh, you know, who knows? Then we play Michigan. What is Michigan this year? Like yeah. we that's a huge it's a big question. question. They're not gonna have and cameras no more. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> they have played Texas by this point. They will have played a ton of Big Ten competition, mm -hmm. and they will be two games away from Ohio State. Yep. So mm -hmm. there's going to be a lot of things looming large in that game. Uh that you know, I've just gone through 10 games of Indiana season, mm -hmm. and there is not a single one where I mark it as an auto loss. Yeah. That is something I've never done. Even Ohio State? Football. He hasn't gotten there yet. Oh, okay. I, was I say. haven't gotten there yet. <laughs> and then we get a bye week, I think, after we play Michigan, if I remember again, because this is because it's a leap year. Yes. Yeah. Yep. Uh, we, play, we do a bye week and then play Ohio State and then get Purdue at home. So yep. yeah, okay. yeah. Like, uh, there's one game against Ohio State, against the, the angry, mad, Ohio State, the yeah. one that's going crazy. Like there are two teams I do not want to play next year, and we only have to play one of them. Mm -hmm. uh, one is Ohio State, the other one's Oregon. Those yeah. are the two teams that like are playing angry next year. They are. Ohio State's playing with wounded pride. Oregon is like punching drywall angry. Yeah, yeah, uh, that's true. And I, I am, I want nowhere, anywhere part of <laughs> yeah. that. Dan Lanning has that 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 train like. It's running off the tracks because it's running too fast. That's right. And I don't want to be there. Ohio State, it is what it is. Don't get me started about how we wasted our best chance to break the streak against Ohio State this past oh, season yeah. because yeah. of the stupid uh, run up, like the stupid option offense that we installed. That oh, no, 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 no. Walpole's gone. He's fired. He's somewhere yeah. else. <laughs> Fair Can't enough. hurt me anymore. So, yeah, so, so, so eleven and one is your prediction, or is that what your <laughs> highest hopes yes. is? I will say this. If we don't go to a bowl game, I will cons well, if we don't get five wins, okay. I will consider the season a failure. That's fair. Not the yeah, I wouldn't be surprised if you guys make it to a bowl, though. Like Everything, yeah. I, well, I, I would call that the minimum for a success. Yeah. Five okay. wins, I'm like, okay. You know, it's like, I understand, you know, this situation is not easy and you got to come in and, like, start your program up. But if he, can, if he can't get to five wins, then I'm like, that's a failure year one, not like a failure for the tenure, yeah. but like sure. a year one isolated sure. failure. Yeah. And like you've dug a small hole. You have to get I out. just need y'all to do two things. You guys are going to lose to UCLA already, but I need you to beat Ohio State. I need to be able to just rub it in Luke's face. <laughs> I, that's the, that's I the only think, thing I need to I use. To do. Like nine days to Sunday. <laughs> yeah. Nine days to Sunday. <laughs> All right. Well, again, Ryan, thank you so much for joining us tonight. Uh, real quick, uh, go ahead and give your plugs again for where people can find you. Yeah, absolutely. You can find me on Twitter at B-Town Bucket Boy. I mostly post about Indiana football. I occasionally pipe up about Indiana basketball, even though I'm not really a hoops head, but I just do. like being a, a Twitter creature. Just I love to, throwing you know, your chair in there. Participate yep. in the sports discourse. <laughs> uh, and then you can follow the pod at all for the number four you uh, pod. That's at all for you pod on there. We post mostly when the football season's going right now, we're kind of like retired to our own individual accounts. Very we're going to start sure. ramping up the content machine as we get closer to uh, the, the end of spring ball and stuff like that. But right now, you know, we'll put out a, a regular episode every now and again. The one awesome. that we just put up recently was our big 10 power rankings. Mm -hmm. You want to hear me wax poetic. If you love the sound <laughs> of my voice, yes. <laughs> uh, I, I unfortunately steal the mic for a lot of our, of our podcast and ramble a lot so you know <laughs> if you want to hear me rank all the big 10 teams uh and you can you can go look at that it's kind of fun fair enough yeah, awesome sure. yeah. well thanks again for joining us tonight and we hope you have a wonderful rest of the week yeah. thank you thank you thank you very much thank have you. a good one yeah you too, too.